Welcome to Talking Turkey, uh, Turkish American Hour program that we discuss issues of interest as they relate to Turkey. I'm your host, Ercu Akman. Welcome to our program. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about a very controversial issue, and probably it is sort of self inflicted. And we might say uh, recently uh, we received mail saying that what is the relationship between Turkey the bird and Turkey the country? This expression of course, is of interest to Turkish Americans as their friends confront them during these two major holidays that Turkey was enjoyed, both in Thanksgiving and New Year, and they asked their Turkish friends what bird would they use in their own holidays. Of course, we can look and approach this issue from a variety of different angles. Let's say how the word Turkey as it appeared in English language, as it relates to Turkey. Initially, as the Ottoman Empire, as a counterbalance to the French trade in East Mediterranean, they offered trade opportunities to the British, and these traders, almost buying shares and joining the companies established for these activities, are called Turkey merchants. And one of the items they were able to export from the region through Egypt and in some cases from the Turkish harbors, was a bird known as guinea fowl. Even this bird was prevalent in many other parts of Africa, in Asia. Uh, the name stuck with the country as guinea fowl, and the bird was enjoyed also in India and other parts of Europe as they were brought in. And it was called, in many instances, uh, Turkish cock and sometimes uh, Turkish fowl. What brought us to the American experiences? This bird, as it was enjoyed in many instances, when the first pilgrims came to North America, they recognized this bird as the bird they always enjoyed in Europe. And the name, in a way, was created as a misnomer. And as this bird was imported to England, it was also called turkey bird. And in other instances, other products that came from North America was called turkey grain or turkey corn. And in some instances, the name grain and corn lost their connection to turkey. However, it stayed with the bird turkey. We know that the bird was introduced um, in a time and it became a quite uh, it had a varied use by uh, 1575 in the English tables, and it was enjoyed. Now, this is also not very unique to this particular bird, but we see in other instances where, due to their exotic nature, these names that stuck to other animals. One of them is, again, another uh, bird from the Americas, which is called Muscovy duck, which has nothing to do with Moscow, of course, but the name that stuck. Even other products like uh, Jerusalem artichoke, which the part of the Jerusalem was a transmutation of the word sunflower as from the Italian word girasol eventually ended up as Jerusalem. So we know that these words do not mean that much. And in the case of Turkey and why it was called Hindi was another misconception about the origin of this bird when the new lands were opened, it was considered uh, the route to India, and many things that came from these parts of the world were in respect related to India, even though today we still find West Indies islands, but also in Turkish we call the bird Hindi. Probably it is a continuation of the way uh, French called this a poulet d'end, like the chicken from India, and eventually shortened to Dindon, and it came to be known as Hindi in, in Turkey. We can look at some other uh, languages um, in the standard Arabic. It is also called uh, uh, Deek Hindi, and also the Palestinians call it, again, Deek Habash, which is uh, connecting it to the Ethiopia and the Abyssinia as to the origin of the, um, the Guinea fowl that came from, basically, from Madagascar. Uh, we do know that the, the bird turkey was brought to, um, to India 
and uh, we, we find about this in uh, 1612. The Portuguese brought this bird from their, their colonies to the Indian colony of Goa, and they made a gift to the, to the Mughal emperor uh, Jahangir. And how do we know this? Because uh, in those years, uh, Jahangir uh, commissioned a book that talks about uh, some of the institutions of his empire. And we have copies of this book in Victoria and Albert collection in England. And we see the, uh, the turkey predominantly displayed as part of this Portuguese gift to, to Jahangir. Now, you might also ask that if Turks call it Hindi, whether this bird is very prevalently found in India, even though uh, many of the um, uh, merchants and, uh, and other uh, Western uh, people, they try to introduce this bird to India, but it is also very expensive to feed this bird with basically grain, the domesticated version, so it has not established a, a foothold in India. So today we find uh, hardly any uh, uh, turkeys in India. And as a matter of fact, recently I discovered in some of the internet chatter, the, the expats, Americans who live in India, they were uh, asking each other if they can find this particular bird, and they were having some, some difficulties. Now, we do find Turkey in, uh, as it relates to, as we know, it's only in English language that we have this particular connection, but we see it in many, many uh, areas that they try to use this type of connection. When, for example, we look at the Ernest Hemingway, um, Hemingway book, A Farewell to Arms, we see that the, um, the American volunteer who is driving the ambulance uh, was confronted by their friends and ask him the question whether Turkey will enter the war. And his answer was, uh, uh, jokingly, he says, of course, because Turkey is our holy bird. Now, if you come to some, uh, some recent um, American uh, television material, the famous episode in, in 2005 in The Simpsons, where Marge ends up in a, uh, in a Turkish freighter, the first question that comes to her mind when he sees Turkish sailors, uh, she says, who came first, Turkey or you guys? Now, the expression of Turkey we find in uh, English language in, in some other expressions as part of these expressions. For example, going cold Turkey, which again, we find it as, as a withdrawal and people use it now for cigarette smoking. But we see it in 1955 Frank Sinatra film where he's trying to kick a, the habit of using uh, heroin. And of course, uh, sometimes it is connected for the, with the eastern part of the world. Uh, he uses the expression of going cold turkey. But probably it is more uh, relating to some of the withdrawal symptoms where skin might turn into goosebumps. So let's not uh, divulge on that. But for example, again in 1930s, we see that in the, in the slang of the, uh, the show world, when a show is not very successful, it was called a turkey. And during the 60s and 70s, it was um, an expression used for people who were actually behaving in a stupid fashion. And probably that's what Turkish Americans object, that they're trying to connect themselves with this particular connotation. But we can also see that there is another expression called a turkey shoot. Again, it is coming from a military expression used during the, uh, introduced in the language during the Second World War, where they were using uh, uh, turkeys for target practice. They were tied behind logs and benefiting from their, the darting head movements that were used as shooting practice. And never is, maybe it was an easy target, we don't know. But let's talk to uh, other issues as they relate to uh, United States, how this bird ended up as a very popular bird. Now we know that, um, it is widely uh, raised in the domesticated fashion in almost every state uh, except Alaska. And they were actually, we know historically, that uh, they were herded across state lines, uh, just like cattle. And truly, uh, the, the turkey was even considered by Benjamin Franklin to become um, the national symbol of United States. And probably uh, it is due to the uh, to the changing color of 
uh, Turkey's uh, face as the mood changes from even white to, to dark blue and, and to red, and maybe it made a good connection to the American flag. We just don't know that. But what do the Americans uh, select as their national bird? They take a bird which is predominantly a Canadian bird, actually. The bald eagle ends up being the symbol of the America and the United States. So all we are trying to say is there isn't actually a real controversy, and there's a lot of misunderstanding, of course. But there is hardly any particular relationship between the turkey, the country, and turkey, the bird. It was all a part of a misconception. And I don't think we should feel in any way harmed by this expression used for Turkey. But of course, we will return to similar subjects in our other programs, and we discuss issues as they relate to Turkey. Thanks for watching Turkish American Hour. I am Erger Ackman. We will meet at another program with you again. Goodbye.